said. Yes, yes, that was it. That took 20 minutes of loading to get to that point, and that was the point we wanted. Beautiful National Sports Institute track, uh, Malaysia, with the Southeast Asian Sprint Queen Tomalam, who's been one of our Leela athletes now for a few years training with us. And specifically today, we're working on an issue that all speed athletes have. I just got back from our partnership team with in Florida there with Star Athletics. Dennis gave me this nice hat. Thank you, Dennis. And um, uh, what we're working on there, even with the super elites, is a block start. What we're going to talk about today is a couple of technical areas that all speed athletes, even if you're looking at coming out of a three-point stand, are working on. And it's really about getting force into the ground and behind you as quick as possible. So we're going to be looking at loading and unloading using, using assistive and resistive loading to work on technical areas of the block start. And hopefully we're going to provide some value to you coaches and athletes out there that are working on the same issue. So in problem number one with a lot of athletes coming out of the block is where those feet are going as you step and drop. Now, a lot of athletes have a really high arc, right? It's, it's called your knee to ankle angle. And what they're trying to concentrate on is not letting that leg come up too high, letting it come forward. So motion is forward rather than up and then forward, which obviously slows down time, correct? Yes. And this is something you've been working on as well. Yeah, I'm working really, really much again. From a, from a problem solution perspective, the problem is that high foot, we're going to be doing some assistive and resistive loading. Assistive loading so she can first feel what the problem is. When body parts are behind you, you're very unaware of what's going on. When a coach sits there and says, lay one out, top speed, go, the only thing you're thinking about is exploding. And you have no idea what those legs are doing. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to put some very specific loading in around the calf so she can feel that leg and the position it's in. And that's what we call an assistive load, which means it's assisting them to correct it because they become aware of the movement. After that, we're going to be moving to a resistive loading, which is the one that's going to work on her keeping that leg down as she drives out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at her block start. We're going to look at the issue. She knows she's working on it. She's obviously going to be conscious of it today. What I want you to concentrate on is as she gets in the blocks. So she's well warmed up too, as always. You know, we want to make sure the athlete's ready to do these. Block starts are an explosive activity. And just going down into her position. Again, what we're looking for is the movement of this leg and this foot coming out straight, not up and then down and straight. So pay attention to what's happening at the back end, what's called the back end mechanic. And all I want you to do now, come along, is just lay it out. Put some effort in, okay? Out to one, two, three, four, five, and then stride. Let's let's go with the big one. On your mark. Set. Now I don't know if you saw that, but it was really obvious. Now a couple things too, because I gave her race-type cueing, she immediately was thinking about exploding. The first thing you saw from that foot was how it came up. So what we want to do now is we want to work on some corrective loading to help her be aware of that motion staying down. We're going to do that now with next. What we're going to do with these right now is we're going to load so that she feels the lower leg and connects to it so she can first try to correct it herself. This is called assistive loading. So she's wearing our exigen calf sleeves, very comfortable compression wear if you haven't seen. And these are 200 gram weights, so these are about 8 ounces. Now it doesn't sound like a lot, but it doesn't take a lot to affect movement. What we want to do now is, we essentially, this is how I always explain technical condition with the load. The coach's hand, the coach is always touching an athlete, saying, I want you to feel this, I want you to feel that ankle, pull down here. But we can do that with the weight now without you telling them anything. And so, if you think of from a coaching perspective, you want to push that foot down, keep that low drag, keep that knee, at, that angle at the knee and the ankle correct, where would you put your hand? You'd put it right here. You'd put it right there on the back of the ankle, getting them to think about that trajectory. So that's where the belly of the load will go. We're going to put that right down low in what we call a posterior distal position. Because the belly of the load, most of the weight, is distal to the rotating joint, which in this case is the knee. That feels a lot heavier than if I put the load up here. 
We want it to feel heavy. We want her to feel the need to drag. Remember, first session is about awareness. We're gonna let her do this. Loading's on there, nice. She's got weight right down at that ankle. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have her get in the block and try the same thing. Coach's hand, we want that right here. We want them concentrating on keeping that weight low, the ankle and the angle low, and the load's gonna do that for us coming up out of the block. A little bit better. I can see it's already a little bit lower. You're aware of it. How did that feel? Uh, um, I'm more concentrated of my block style because previous I'm kicking out and I'm taking a big roll. So yep. now when I put the leela on it, the weight, so you keep me low. All right. So, so, keep so, me low. so first thing you're aware of that now, yeah. right? All right, we're yeah. gonna do another one, same thing, and I want you to use the weight to correct it. You can feel it's keeping you low. Now concentrate on the quick mechanic yeah. while blowing up. I saw the change occur. 100% there's a little difference in the angle and she's more aware of it because the load you can feel. She has a nervous system, it's there. But sometimes you'll see a problem like this is very significant. It's been there her whole life. Any sprinter will know that. And also the hamstrings in speed fire tremendously, right? They're a high speed muscle. So this action from the hamstring is dominant. 200 grams might not be enough. So what we're going to do, and I can already predict, we're going to have to add a little more weight to really make her feel that. But I want to do one more first. So all correction is self-correction. Really want to see how much she's able to engage using the tool because now she has a stimulus she's never had there before. Not during block stops. Set. Now what, if you notice something technical, she's starting to stumble. That stumble is telling me she's already adjusting her movement pattern. Whether it's good or bad, you coaches, you have that discussion yourself. That's not what we're here to talk about today. But the change in her mechanics already tells me the load is having an effect and it's probably in the direction we want. That stumble means she's doing something different. Now what we want to do, let's make it worse again. She's resisting that load, but it's definitely there and it's affecting technique. So let's make it impossible to resist and really drag. Now one thing from a safety issue, and I've seen this happen, when you blow out at high speed, it's very possible that you're going to drag and stumble. So when I add new weight, I'm going to have her do one a little bit slower so she feels her legs and then concentrate on blowing out. You don't want anybody driving themselves into the ground. Ultimately, that's the balance position from a start they need to be aware of. It's safety first. Okay, so as expected, the first load, she's even reacting to it already. She's starting to contract against it. And what we want to do now is make it even worse. We can see in the second step, the first step, it was starting to get lower, second step starting to come up. So a lot's happening and that's good. And it's a bit of a feeling process as well. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna add more weight. We're gonna put another 200 grams here. We're gonna put it around, just around at the back as well. This is gonna make that movement quite heavy. So there's basically a pound. There's 400 grams there. And it's gonna be hard to wanna to lift that leg. And the other thing I want you to do is not slow down. I noticed too, the second one's a little slower. You saw that? Yeah. So really focus on, most important, one, two, three. Look how far she ran down the track. She put more force into the ground. Let's see what she felt. Okay, so we put 400 grams on there. It's a fairly heavy load. What did you feel? Push back. What do you mean? Push back. Like, you know, I'm first, I really want to focus my drive, my stocks. Yeah. So now, when the load is on my calf, I want to, like, push back. Just yep. keep going. So were you, were you able to feel that, yes. that load? Yes. It's what we talked about. The first comment I made is, wow, she went an extra 10 meters. Yeah. She didn't stop early, which it tells bring, you... brings you forward. Momentum. Yes. Yeah, yes. so what's happening now is she's feeling that drive and all of a sudden she's ending up down the track where she didn't expect to be. Where she didn't have that drive and it was a step, step, step. She just controlled it by stopping. So these are the little subtle things that matter. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to change this from an assistive load pushing down to a resistive load that's going to stop, it's going to feel like it's stopping that hamstring from pulling up. We're going to use the exact same amount of weight, but we're going to flip it onto the front of the calf. 